fall down in Tucson in the first couple of rounds down there. Certainly, statistically, it has not been the same. But, Brent, what has been great for P.J. Carlissimo, he's been able to come off the bench with guys that have given him almost 20 points per game. Tonight, the inside players from the bench have produced absolutely zero. So Ramos is going to have to produce in the second half. Now, the other side of it, take a look at the Michigan defense. It has been superb tonight. Meanwhile, Seton Hall not doing as well as they normally do. And Michigan shooting 50% from three-point range. You'll see that that Michigan defense has been forcing the Pirates out to the perimeter. Now, the point guard comparison that Billy brought up at the top of the broadcast, Ramil Robinson has been spectacular, but he has not been given a break until we hit the intermission. He's played every minute. As for the big guns, well, Glenn Rice with his 13 points. He's on pace for 26. Gaze without a field goal and only two free throws. And he has been working hard on defense, and it could be troubling him at the offensive end. So we get started. Let's see what Seton Hall does here to come from behind here in the second half. Michigan has looked very impressive. Brent, I think both teams are going to show quicker feet in this second half. It was a very slow pace first half. They might have been trying to save themselves a little bit. Remember, neither of these clubs had been in the championship before in terms of the, uh, the national title. I think they were playing a little bit under wraps. Green punches in now to Walker, who goes to work and is blocked by Mills. And there is Ramil Robinson. So with a five-point lead, which is big in a championship game, now a block, and Michigan comes out with its first opportunity. Everything going the Wolverines' way right now. Rice missing on the three. Morton reaching in on but fouled in. Now, one of the things that both of these teams do so well is come over from the weak side to help out whenever the ball goes in the post. And you can see Mills coming over to help out when he realized that Vaught was beat on the inside by Walker. A great block and turned it right into offense for Michigan. No spacing there to get the ball to Mills. Mills hits the turnaround. And it's 39-32, a 7 Point lead, the biggest of the night for the Wolverines. That was a smart play by Robinson. Once he dumped in, he realized Mills had no room to operate and took his man down under the basket. Three-point land and foul on the inside by Ramos, his second. Brent, very unusual the way these two teams are playing. Seton Hall averages 14 three-pointers a game on the norm. Tonight, that was their 15th three-point shot already. On the other hand, Michigan has been a great three-point shooting team, but so far tonight, they have only taken three, which is really out of character for these two clubs. And Cooper will replace Morton. Strictly due to foul problems right there. Again, that works out a little bit, in my estimation, in favor of Michigan. Because you don't have to guard Morton's one-on-one -on -one penetration. So it's a blocking foul against Michigan that time. We saw Rice again trying to rub Gaze off the ball. And Brent, I think you're right on the money. Gaze playing Rice is not only having to chase a great score and have his mind set on him, but he's getting pounded by those big screens set by the Michigan inside people. Well, that foul was on Vaught. They try to get it in low to Ramos, who comes up, and this time he gets it put down, and he'll move to the free throw line after Wolf Mills picks up his second. Ramon now a 1,000-point scorer at Seton Hall. Good job getting the ball down inside. And even though they've got people reaching for the arms, he shows that tremendous strength to put the ball back up inside. So a three-point play for Carlissimo. Nine points for Ramos. It's 39-35. Michigan's turn. Now they've got Cooper on Rice. Rice steps out with Cooper chasing him, and that's a two-point field goal. Fifteen points for Glenn Rice. Green goes all the way, comes up short, run down in the corner by Rice, sends it deep to Robinson. Here's Mills, over to Vaughn, and a beautiful pass from Mills, who threw a blind pass on Saturday to Sean Higgins. So Mills continues to play with some enthusiasm under Steve Fisher. And we're talking about a guy getting out at the break at six foot ten. They wanted Walker. They've turned it over. Bought to Griffin, and here's Robinson. And the Wolverines softly in control. Yeah, 
He is so tough to handle on that break with that big upper body strength. Glenn Rice turns around, makes the perfect pass. It had to go up court so Robinson could get it. And there's the great pass by Mills. Not only the great pass, but how about the way he stepped off to the right-hand side to make sure the charge could not be caught. Smart play by Mills. And the third personal on Gaze as Robinson will shoot two. Ramil, a third-team All-Big Tenner this year, sure to be a preseason All-American type candidate next year. We've got a timeout. Michigan leading at 44 to 35. played in St. Louis tonight the star of the game has been Ramil Robinson 15 points and six assists he has not rested a minute in either Saturday's semifinal or tonight's championship game now Green who is trying to find daylight against him slips inside this time and comes up with a field goal his first and second half Brent, I see a little bit of change in Seton Hall the last two times down the floor Ramos has picked up his intensity Green likewise Going to need it as Vaught steps out and bangs it home, and it's now eight for Loy Vaught. A lot of people thought Vaught two years ago would be just a journeyman player at Michigan. He developed into a third-team all-big tenor and a great perimeter shooter. Cooper thought about it. Gaze will take the three. Still can't find the range. Vaught yanks off the miss. Griffin is getting that hand at six foot six right up in Gaze's face. Hey, what a stroke that is. 18 for the evening. That'll take that smile out of your face. Well, he steps back a little bit on his jump shot, so even if you think you're there, he's fading away instead of going straight up in the air, and it's hard to block. Green coming down for the corner. Has lost it. Michigan with the turnover. Wolverines, who are five of six from the field this half, come back down with their seventh trip. Fred, I think Seton Hall is going to have to go inside and show they can get some inside game going because so far they've been working strictly on the perimeter. Griffin got that tip shot. Started every game for Michigan, only averaging under, averaging under three a game, but valuable. Well, a physical difference beginning to show in this game. That size on the inside that the Wolverines possess becoming a huge factor now. There's a case where Ramil saw Walker coming over from the weak side to defend. He's got to swing that ball over to get a little better angle. Both teams very, very well coached. You think that uh, Carlissimo needs to just go to the inside? Here. Yeah, they've got to get back to the inside. They're settling so much on the perimeter, which has not been what brought them to this national championship game. They're going to start pounding down in there. Weiss tries to run it down, and Griffin quickly hustles to it. Getting all the loose balls. Boy, they look sharp. Goes over to Seton Hall. They are down 49-37. Okay. We talk about going inside. They've got Walker and Ramos. You need to let them get down in that double low box and start hitting the ball inside some. Green taking Robinson inside. Wanted Ramos. They've turned it over again. Green is starting to try to do too much on his own, Brent. It's getting away from their game plan. Vaught jumps it into Rice on the inside with a snap turnaround. Walker takes it off, and now it's Morton. Morton into the middle to Green, who comes through and draws the foul on Griffin. Well, a reminder that at the conclusion of tonight's championship game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game, and in conjunction with that award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 
to the general scholarship fund of both Michigan and Seton Hall. John now that Higgins and Hughes substitution pattern that uh, Steve Fisher used so well in the first half starting to come in, so this team will be hard to wear down. Good double team from the weak side. Morton off the dribble through the foul. That's Rice's second. He'll come up and shoot a pair of free throws. Higgins has checked back in for the Wolverines. Uh, Brent, what Ramos has to realize is when they hit the ball down inside and he's being double teamed like that, the man that's going to be open is the man opposite him up out on the wing. Normally that's Gaze, and tonight Seton Hall has not been able to go to that type of alignment. Ramos sits down as Avent checks back in, and this bench production, which has fueled the Seton Hall run of the national championship, has not been there tonight. Oh, nope. two points, and that was only two. Remember by Pookie Wigginton when the clock was running down and he went one on one inside. And this field goal can pull Seton Hall back to within 10 if successful. You notice Morton has those girdle pants underneath. There's been a rule change. Next year, those girdle pants must be the same as the regular pants in color. So you'd have to wear a white girdle next year. A simple change in the rules. Mills with a pick and a hard one on green, allowing Robinson to bring it up now to the attack for Michigan. Oh, jams it. Ramil Robinson. Missing again, and now Higgins rebounding and quickly up the floor to you know who. Robinson short now, and Walker is off for Seton Hall. Gaze, who's been shut down, over to Green, who hoists the three. Rice loses it, and it'll be Seton Hall's ball. Brent, on this play, the reason Robinson was able to go baseline, the defense relaxed once he went to the corner. They just assumed he'd pull the ball back out, but he's so strong going to the hole, he was able to go over the top of the dunk. And there are the parents who raised him back in Cambridge, Mass. Attended the same high school as Patrick Ewing. New York Nick Starr, of course, led Georgetown to a national championship right here in Seattle a few years back. Now it's Morton off the dribble with the left hand. Wolf can't get the roll. That's the kind of night it is. It is breaking Michigan's way. The Wolverines searching for their first national championship, beaten in the title game by Indiana. In the late 70s, Lloyd Vaught checking in. Seton Hall is without a field goal, Billy, over the last four minutes. That's what they've been doing to other clubs. That, that national championship in 76, first time two teams from the same conference played for it. Bobby Knight's club coming away with a win. Event off the miss by Higgins. And Green gets it to Walker with a nice pass. Green starting to pick up the tempo a little bit, just exactly what he did against Duke to bring Seton Hall back. But do they have an answer to this young man right here, Ramil Robinson? He has orchestrated a tremendous game here tonight for the Wolverines. And Rice, when he gets open, has knocked it down. Now it's bought. Seton Hall trying to put together a run off this miss. It'll be green again. This is a very big trip for the Pirates. Well, that was a good kick by Ramil Robinson because Walker posted up on Vaught down inside and had him beat. 45 second shot. Clock put back up to 45. Walker missed the jumper. Gets it back. Goes for the layup, but he traveled. DJ's father been watching from the stands here. He is the first coach sporting the beard to appear in a national championship game in case you're wondering about that piece of trivia. Well, you know, Brett, the man that was sitting beside him, Richie Regan, of course, is one of the great players for Seton Hall that took them to what then was also the national championship, the NIT, that they won. Longtime coach at Seton Hall as well, one of the great all-time backcourt players. So now, Caleb running the team and Rice missing the three. I like the gamble by Steve Fisher, though, to take Robinson out. But 
right away. They get a field goal, and how long can they afford to rest Ramil Robinson? That becomes a factor now. It's 51-43. We've got to keep an eye on when Robinson is going to return. I think Fisher will use a timeout, give him another break here, use the commercial to rest him, and maybe run him right back in. Let's see what he elects to do. We're going to take a break and come right back. are contributing here themselves. Look at Ramil Robinson get right in Caleb's face to tell him what he thought about his defensive effort that last trip down the floor. There, Helen and Lewis Ford who raised the young man back in Massachusetts and so proud of what he's accomplished. But they face a very tough defense Billy, down the stretch. Well, they do. Uh, Seton Hall has been tough down the stretch, and you need notice that Ramil is still on the bench. I think, as I said, I think it's a smart move by Steve Fisher. He's still up around the double-digit mark. He knows he's going to need him for that last six minutes. He'd like him to be rested and probably go as long as he can here with him on the bench if he can keep the lead. Rice on a cut. Keeps going. No traveling called on that move. And 20 points for Glenn Rice. Now it's Gaze who's been very quiet. Giving it up. Back over to Morton. Gaze with only two free throws in the game. He's missed all four of his shots from the field. Here he is looking to get on the board, taking Griffin on the inside, electing not to go through with it. And it'll be Morton who'll step up. And Aben underneath. Got to roll that time. And that's their first field goal down on the inside off the bench. Trent, I, I cannot understand why Seton Hall has abandoned the punch in the ball inside. Because when they punch it in, that's how Gaze gets open when people try to slough off. He has been a non-factor tonight. As Seton Hall has been constantly using the perimeter game. Robinson waiting to check back in. Fisher cannot wait any longer. Well, he's going to give him a, it's going to be a mount to about a five minute rest here before he gets back in. It's a different play. team without Ramil Robinson. That's for sure. 53 45, 10 and a half minutes. And now Seton Hall can apply a little pressure if they can come away with a successful trip this time. Avin goes to work on the inside, and the blocking foul is called. And Ramil Robinson set to check back in. There was a case where Hughes did not move his feet on that defensive play because Avon had already committed himself to the point where there wasn't much he could do but take a bad shot. Ramon Ramos coming back into the game. Five team fouls against Michigan, only three against Seton Hall. Green coming down and Ramos collapsing to the floor and the foul is against Griffin. That's his third personal foul. Getting tough underneath. Though. It is, and Mills is going to come back, and you can see good help again from the weak side. Ramos goes up and just powers the ball down against Vaught and Griffin. Hughes goes out, Mills comes back in, so they gain about a two-inch advantage inside. Both teams just straight, hard-nosed man-to-man the entire night. Nothing complicated, but a lot of good hard work and good defensive teaching. They've been staying on the floor with Ramos. Morton off a of fake, and Higgins right there fouled him. That's his second. So, reminder that the Masters begins Thursday and at 11.30 p.m. Thursday and Friday. You can watch highlights and then, of course, weekend coverage on Saturday and then the final round on Sunday afternoon. Walker on the floor with Ramos. So P.J. now has his starting lineup intact back on the floor. If they're going to make a run, they've got to make it over the next couple of minutes. Billy, they're doing a much better job defensively on Glenn Rice. Rice has hit only one of his last six field goals. That defense that has been the trademark of Seton Hall now starting to surface here. And he's 53 47. He's sitting down right now. So Steve Fisher didn't want to have Rice and Robinson out at the same time. He's got he wants to give Rice a couple of minutes as well. Look at those Seton Hall fans now getting into it. They punch in low now. Mills trying to get it done. 
and it was a hell ball. Possession arrow, Michigan. Excellent defense by Walker. Watch Walker. He uses his body, uses his lower legs, does not foul. Mills goes up. Now Rice has to come back in. Steve Fisher on both the Rice substitution and Robinson would like to have had at least another minute or so for both of them to sit on the bench, but he can't afford it now. They got the 10 minute run to go. Higgins hoists a three. Big field goal for the Wolverines. Seton Hall was closing back in when Higgins hit that three near the nine and a half minute mark. The young man's at 14 and 31 in the regional game, so he has come on very strong for Michigan after a drought at midseason. This is the national championship game on CBS between Michigan and Seton Hall. Michigan moving ahead in the first half. They have maintained that lead. Their biggest lead of the game was 12 points. Mike Griffin leaving because of the fourth personal foul. And Caleb, number 13, you can see on his jersey, has replaced him. This is John Morton. That means that Robinson and Caleb matched up with Morton and Green puts Rice back out on Gaze, so Rice gonna have to work a little bit. Maybe they'll keep Higgins on him so Rice can be fresh, but then he'll have to go down inside and play a walker. So some tough matchup decisions right now for the Michigan coaching staff. Missing the free throw. Rice with control. And key player for Michigan tonight, bringing it down, Ramil Robinson. He's played a great game. Rice rubbing off that double low down inside. Bill sends it back to Caleb. They wanted Rice. Walker got out on him. Scoop back up. Fishing it underneath. Mills can't get it to fall. And Ramos is there. Now it's off into Green's hands. Green penetrating, and there's a foul going against Michigan on the inside. And that will be the second on Caleb. Been on the other end of the floor, you just, you'll never see it in the stats, but Walker showed some of the great defense of guarding and helping out on that last play to prevent Michigan from getting what could have been an easy basket. Billy, this game is starting to change a little bit. Yep, you can feel it. And it's because of the defensive effort of Seton Hall right now. Well, you've got a situation for Michigan. It's time maybe to go back to Ramil Robinson on some penetration. He did it so well in the first half, but he's not been able to do anything here in the second half with the ball. First half, you had uh, Ramil Robinson with 14 and Glenn Rice with 13, but they both have been cooled off some. Mr. Carlos Abo has uh, six other children in attendance. There are 10 children in all, seven of them have made their way to Seattle. A little push. Push underneath will go against Walker. That's his first personal foul. And for the team, that's the fourth on Seton Hall. And Michigan is up over the limit. Now, Michigan has hit against this defense only three of its last 14 shots. That's 21% right now. And they need to get something done. And Seton Hall only has three team fouls, which means they've been doing it just with solid defense. Field goals was Higgins' three-point shot. Now he backs in Gaze. He'll take another one, forcing it up. And Ramos can't get the handle on it. And uh, Mills takes it off Ramos and out of bounds. So Ramon Ramos continues to struggle. He, normally, he has some of the best set of hands in the Big East. And... Uh, Bo Schimbeck was studying that clock, seeing eight and a half minutes up there. Well, Ramos, Ramos probably saying that play is illegal down in Puerto Rico on our national team because in the international ball, you can't throw it off a man back out of bounds. Rice got a hits the three. Walker leaving just a hair room. That's all he needs. So the inability to hold on to the ball underneath the basket really cost Seton Hall. Now it's Walker who comes back. He has scored eight points, and it's still an eight-point lead by Michigan. And with Caleb on the floor, you notice Robinson not having to handle the ball so much, so he's not wearing himself down. 
In the last four minutes or so, you can expect to see him with the ball. Oh, the penetration couldn't hit it. Yanked down by Green. Robinson fell. He won't be back defensively. Green dishes off now to Morton, and Morton is fouled by Caleb, and that's Caleb's third personal. Now the move that Steve Fisher's got to be thinking about making is Caleb out. He's going to come back in with Griffith, but it's going to be for Higgins. He's trying to play with his three ball handlers now. I would expect to see a little more power back in there shortly. But Seton Hall starting to get some advantage inside. Really, the way uh, Neil Robinson turned in that Iron Man performance in the first half, and we see how well Glenn Rice has scored six tournament games when Bill Bradley set his record. Uh, the senator from New Jersey played in five games, so Rice had the advantage of an extra game as Cooper checks in off the Seton Hall bench. Senator Bradley sent Seton Hall a good luck telegram tonight before the game, which uh, which the school showed me, and they said, you know, the last time a New Jersey school got into the uh, Final Four, they were beaten by Michigan, and of course that was Princeton, which yep. uh, Bradley played for. Well, senator Bradley and Senator Lautenberg in New Jersey got a little bet going. I didn't know they wagered on Capitol Hill. They've got a, a bet going with uh, Senator Regal and Levin from uh, Michigan. <laughs> and listen to the bet. If they lose, if Seton Hall loses, they get a case of M&Ms. I mean, uh, come on, guys. Let's, uh, and, and if it goes the other way, some Verner's ginger ale go to the senders from New Jersey. So big wager on Capitol Hill. Walker watching the successful free throw. It's down to six. 59-53 now with 7.42. They want it. There's a defense. Ramos up with it. And Morton coming back in the middle now. Morton will try to go all the way. the first half and they have been out of sync without him quarterbacking this team well you've got to think of fatigue remember the Illinois game just hey, two Billy, days ago rest tomorrow well, but you just, sometimes the legs just don't do it you know it's kind of like a prize fight you you know what you want to do but you can't get the hands to move Rice coming around Cooper now with the jump shot Olsen is there with the rebound Cooper defended him with his legs that time just by keeping him away Morton looks quick through the lane, hits the field goal. The officials got to be thinking time out to stop this move. Now it's a two-point game, 59-57. Remember now, Michigan led it by 12, so we settle in now for the stretch. We know what this club does under eight minutes. Robinson's open, and coming over was Volsey. He took a good foul. He didn't let him squeeze the trigger on the glass. He'll let him shoot the two free throws. This is a very good look cross court by Mills. Ramil is capable, as we saw earlier, of dunking the ball in that case. But Volsey came over and, as you said, Brent, took away any opportunity for the three-point play. Four percent free throw shooter. Higgins replaces Griffin. Now that move gives Michigan a little more firepower. Especially those of you who followed Michigan all year know that the young man sometimes can get a little out of control, but he certainly was the right man in the right spot on Saturday afternoon. So they have perhaps their best scoring lineup on the floor right now. They're up by four. Inside away from the ball and Higgins was defending Morton and Higgins fouled him. That's his third personal down away from the ball. Not something you'd want from a bigger man against a guard posting him up down there. You're going to see a situation here where Seton Hall now starting to go ahead and run that good picking game down inside and Higgins just goes right ahead and grabs Morton. No way you get away with that foul. Seton Hall Club can bury you on the foul line. A great free throw shooting team. Remember now, Seton Hall trailed Duke by 18. 
They were down a dozen to Michigan. But back to within two. Wolverines bring it down. Not quite as quick going around Green right now as he was in the first half. Ray hits a three. 26 points for the magnificent scoring machine. And that breaks the NCAA tournament scoring record, breaking Senator Bradley's record. Brett with three more, he'll be the all-time Big Ten scorer in history. Ramos still can't get it to fall on the inside. Michigan's ball. P.J. really upset with that because that's exactly what he wanted to get. The ball down inside. You notice how long Gaze has been out of the game. Been a no factor here. Robinson cutting on the inside is foul. There's the list of the great scores, Billy. Oh, Elvin Hayes, Danny Manning, who we saw last year play so well. Glenn Rice has been consistent each and every game. You know, there's no 50-pointer in there. It was just 30, 30, 30, 30 every night. Making the tough baskets as that last one he just threw in. Of course, another thing, uh, Ben, we ought to point out, they know there was no three-point shot back in those days. A lot different than uh, we have today. And talking about rules, the three-point play will stay in college basketball next year from the same distance that was decided today by the Rules Committee. You like the three right where it is? Yeah, yes, it, well, I don't. I think it should go back maybe to the international, but uh, I don't want to see him fooling around with the rules for a while. Bought outside. Taken away by Green. It's 64-59. It's a five-point Michigan lead. Seton Hall did cut it to two. Morton left alone. Won't fall. Michigan with a big rebound underneath. Rice has done an outstanding job, not only of shooting, but of rebounding here this evening. They get it into Vaught. Come on, Rip! Won't fall. Fred, Michigan's putting the ball up a little bit too quick now. You know, the clock can, can help them right here. If they don't have the good shot, they should be bringing it back out. Force Seton Hall to do all the work on defense. steps out. Green over here on the left. They're still wanting to punch it inside, but they don't have their man Ramos. So Green will come down the baseline, keeps the dribble. He's gonna pull it out. It's got 10 seconds to go on the clock. Man falls down, lost the ball, picked up by Seton Hall's Walker, and he drew the foul by Hughes. A lot of guts by Seton Hall to be that patient on that time down the floor. Gaze returning. There's a young man that was the MVP of the West Regional and is not having the kind of game that would be expected out of him today. Not a good day, man. That's right. Andrew Gaze returns to the Seton Hall line. Walker shooting two. Great free throw shooter. Two streaks in college, one of 33 in a row and one of 32 in a row. We've got a timeout. We're at the four minute mark. The next 407 can be an eternity. He has three timeouts, as does P.J. Carlissimo. No fouls to give. In case of a hell ball, it'll go over to Seton Hall. He took over five games ago from Bill Frieder. And this sign moments ago was raised in the Michigan cheering section. And uh, Angie, seated nearby, certainly would second that thought. I spoke with Bo Schembeckle just before it began. There will be no announcement tonight regardless of what happens, said Bo. He will get the first interview. <laughs> that nice. was it. That's nice of him. <laughs> and now it is Rice. Over to Higgins. They get it in and work it around the perimeter, bringing each of the big men out here to handle the ball and then send them back down low on the exchange. 
Mills works his way in now for the good shot. Beautiful play by the Wolverines. Trent is if Bo would win the national championship in football, would he get the first interview possibility to retain his job as football coach? Oh, give me a pointer. Traveling. Again, weak side defense. Been there all day long. This is exactly what happened to Danny Ferry when he played against Seton Hall, having a hard time because great teaching of weak side defense. Robinson looks a little fresher now. That little time he sat down helped him. Now he gets in the inside, lost control. Nice save. Ball with Morton for a breakout. That was a big moment in this game that has pulled Seton Hall back to within three points. But do you see how smart Morton was on this play? He just tapped it enough to get to the teammate and then broke long. That's what it's like to have seniors that have played with each other for four years. They know exactly where they're going to be. He's got a hand on it. Seton Hall's ball. Three on two now. Green off to the side. Morton hits it again. Seton Hall back to within one in two and a half minutes. Well, what is save? Michigan walking down the floor with three players. What save Michigan at this point? Steve Fisher up screaming at his players. Let's start moving. What saved them has been the three-point shot. And there's another one off into Morton's hands. Seton Hall brings Morton, who's been the scoring sensation, up with the layup. 19 points in the second half for John Morton. The Hall's ahead. They've got to go to a timeout. Everybody's walking down the floor. Mills walking down the floor. And Steve Fisher is going for the time. The Seton Hall defense down the stretch. How few field goals they allow each of these teams. And now over the last 13 minutes, Michigan only 6 of 23. John Morton has exploded, scoring 15 of Seton Hall's last 22 points and putting them up, Billy, by one, 67-66. Fred, the ball's got to be in the hands on this time down into Glenn Rice. He's got to touch it some to see if he can get off a decent shot. Green tightening up on Lamille Robinson. Good step out by Morton to prevent. Five seconds. It goes over to the hall. That was Morton that made the play. Rice had come off the double screen, and Morton stepped out to prevent that pass and created the five-second call. He's doing it on both ends of the floor. Now Green, who is celebrating his birthday today, bringing it up to the attack. And what a birthday party this could be. Morton stopping out. Double high stack now by Seton Hall. Going to make Michigan chase them for a while, which is really going to wear down Glenn Rice. Nice piece of coaching here by P.J. Carlissimo. Morton cut off by Mills, so he'll send it back deep to Green. And you know when you have a good free throw shooting team, you don't mind hanging on to the ball and using some clock, because even if you go to the line, you're in good shape. Walker putting it down, and the foul is called. And that on thought is number two. Michigan's over the limit. So we're shooting one and one, and Seton Hall, a good free throw shooting team. Read some of the key things. The arrow pointing in favor of Seton Hall on the next tie-up situation. Also, both teams will be in the one and one. As we said, Seton Hall with a very experienced club, their regular starting team out there now, and a great club on the foul line. Michigan's ball underneath. They 
got to give it up. There's three, there's a differential of about six seconds on the clock, so they can't hold it to the end. But if successful, they can make it tough. They can move up by three, and Seton Hall flashes out with the foul. That was Morton's third. Higgins is 77% free throw shooter. Both teams in the one and one now. As said in the beginning, wives of the coaches are the first ones to get to heaven, and you saw Mrs. Fisher bending down. She can't even look. You know, that might not have been the worst foul in the world because of the clock right now. 34 seconds on the clock. If Higgins makes both of them, they're still going to have 30 seconds, and now they're going to apply a little ice to the young man. A timeout is called by Carlissimo. We'll be right back with a national championship hanging in the balance. basket that made him the all-time Big Ten scoring leader and more importantly from Michigan's standpoint has them on the brink of winning their first ever national championship. The last four of his five field goals have been three-pointers. He has been brilliant here tonight. And now it will be Sean Higgins really at the line. A good free throw shooter percentage wise but just a rookie. Let's think of some of the possibilities. Got a chance to hit two put him up three they still got a three to tie it so not out of the woods even if he makes both the front end makes it a two-point lead for Fisher Higgins dad a former professional player so he's got the good bloodlines did Carlissimo give them a play out of bounds if it's successful we're about to find out will they attack right away or will they go to a timeout they've got 34 seconds so plenty of time left on the clock to do a lot of things Good touch. It's a three-point lead, 34 seconds. Here comes Seton Hall. Think about Gaze right now for the three. And Morton with the hot hand. He'll jack up the three. And it. 24 seconds. Time for Michigan. Now Ramiel Robinson brings it down, and Fisher will use it. Timeout. Well, with Billy Packer and Magic Johnson, I'm Bremus. <laughs> Here we go again. Michigan led it by 12, 51 39 at the 14 16 mark. And then John Morton started to blaze away. Brent, unlike Magic's game in the NBA, you can throw the ball in the backcourt, but they needed to set a screen for Ramil Robinson. Now he's with Green all alone. Very dangerous play here. They get it into Robinson's hand, bringing it down. The final seconds ticking away. Might as well clear out for him and let him take his man. They're going to look for Rice, too, if he can flash. He's going to go to the other side. He comes out high. He's got Gaze on him. Gaze with him. Rice shoots. Rice doesn't get the roll. We're going to go to overtime. First time since 63 when Loyola and Cincinnati went OT. though that have been better for Robinson to dribble it to the hoop and try to get the foul but Rice has been so great throughout this tournament great turnaround jumper it almost shocks you when he doesn't make the shot calculated play yeah you, you good choice I think you can't argue to win it. or lose it yep. absolutely yep he had a shot That's we've it. seen Rice make a lot of them in the tournament this one doesn't fall and we'll go to a five minute overtime Two decades before the Loyola Ramblers defeated Cincinnati a game I'll never forget those of you in the Chicago area were listening to that great call by a red rush they win it they win it now they have a jump ball to start the five minute overtime Higgins controls for Michigan Michigan gets one timeout. they had none and Seton Hall three they hit Rice on the inside and Michigan goes up by two well, it was just two seconds too late. <laughs> but the Wolverines will take it, nevertheless. Seton Hall's ball. Seton Hall has not been in an overtime game this year. Michigan been in one, and they won that game against Iowa. Interesting, that first overtime game in history, the NCAA, Arnie Farron back with Utah MVP, and they won that one. 
Jake Green hits Gaze, bringing Higgins out with him. On the switch, Robinson will take Gaze. And the hot man has been John Morton. Rice watching him. A little clear out for Morton. Takes it into the paint, not there. Ian Ramos play catch. Now with the shot clock running down, Gaze bangs in a three, his first field goal of the game, and it came in overtime. And Brenny just hung around out on the side and lulled Ramil Robinson to sleep. Robinson hits Hughes, who comes out. Higgins here. Rice and Mills along with Robinson. Higgins puts the Wolverines back ahead. You know, Higgins was a guy that looked like he was going to shoot him out of the game, and now he's come back into two big fouls and then that shot. Very conscious of Morton. They get it out to Green, missing the three. Walker goes out after it. Great offensive rebounder, and it's goaltending. Put it down. Walker got by with a push on that initial rebound. We might get a chance to see it. There's his turn on the inside and the goal 10 second one to the in the game for Michigan. Our 12th lead change. We had 33 lead changes between Michigan and Illinois. 312 left in overtime. Seton Hall up by a point. Steal by Green. Got more. He'll bring it down with Robinson. Morton was open. He didn't see him all the way. And Mills with a great defensive effort that time. Now it's two on two. Gaze stayed back with Walker, and as Higgins comes through, he drew the foul. Six foot nine, putting the ball on the floor like this is California product, high school All-American. Balance charge to number 24, Daryl Walker. He is really coming foul. to the front of late. Shooting to number 24, Sean Higgins. It's hard to sense right now which is the fresher team. Walker looks fresh. Morton looks fresh. Ramos not quite as fresh uh, for Seton Hall. Sean Higgins has demonstrated some poise under pressure. Two huge free throws near the end of regulation. Now he nails that one. He's already dropped in a field goal in overtime. This can put Michigan ahead. Doesn't get the roll. Scores tied at 76. See if P.J. goes to that double high now and going to force Michigan to chase. Morton has got another one. 35 points. And a three-point Seton Hall lead. Two and a half minutes. Lamille has been quiet on penetration, Grant. I think he's got to start putting that ball on the floor and go inside like he did in the first half. The three is short, and Morton's there. And now you can see that signal of the P.J. Calismo putting his hand on the top of his head. They're going to play their double high delay game right now. It's impossible to steal the ball on this. You just have to play solid defense and work against the clock. Back into Gaze's hands, and they work it around with plenty of time on the shot clock. timeout call. Seton Hall uses one of its three timeouts. 142 left in overtime and Seton Hall leading it by three. Well, John Morton with 35 points, his career high, and he's moving into some rarefied air. You saw that shot of Bill Walton earlier. He has the record for a championship game with 44. Then it's Gail Goodrich, Jack Gibbons, and Lou Alcindor, who became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, scored 37. And Morton has led the way, 79-76. Seton Hall leading it, and that's the time they have left. Morton gets inside, won't fall, and Rice off with the rebound. Brent Robinson only has one field goal in the second half. He has not been penetrating like he did in the first half. He's given the ball up. Rice open on the three, and this time it won't fall, but Higgins has got it back. Missing, and it is rebounded by Seton Hall, and then they foul, 
and it'll go against Robinson at the 117 mark and Billy Sean Higgins continuing to fire away. Yeah I, I really think that they're getting some bad judgment there by Higgins but I'm surprised why Ramil Robinson is not keeping the ball in his hand penetrating a little bit and then you know that Seton Hall is going to slough down inside he can fire back out to Rice. Billy when you go back and look at this tape tomorrow you'll see that he was not the same after the timeout. They kept the ball in Caleb's hands yep. and they got away from what they were doing very well and that was getting Ramil in on the inside. Remember that reverse yep. jam we had that replay. But he also Brent may be very very tired after that Illinois game because he hasn't been the same in the second half. Good pressure by Green on him. Here he comes. Big Let's see if he takes a free throw. throw. Robinson looking. Green is there and he will not give him an alley. Good defense by Green. Higgins gives it up to Rice. Down toward a minute. Michigan trailing it by three. Mills backs his way in. Now the turnaround and it's a one point game. And the clock gives Michigan one more chance because we're down, down to 41 on the shot clock and more time remaining in the game clock. Now Seton Hall needs something this trip missed an important front end weren't able to get it down the last time before that. And Michigan will look for that defensive stop. The hot hand holding the ball John Morton. And he'll take Rice down on the inside. down toward five seconds on the shot clock. Seton Hall will have to hurry. Morton will go one on one up high short. Michigan's ball. They've got an opportunity here now to win it. They've got to hurry. Five seconds. Robinson goes in foul. foul call with three seconds. A foul against Seton Hall with three seconds. Brent, that's the play that Michigan had been waiting for for a long time. Keep the ball in Ramil Robinson's hands. Make Seton Hall make the play. Not much of a foul, but Green did hit him. Billy Seton Hall did not get a good play up here at the other end. No, they didn't. They wound up with a one-on-one -on -one with Morton going in against two taller Wolverines, and then that allowed Robinson some daylight down here. And as he came on the inside, he was fouled. And so, with three seconds to go, he'll have an opportunity to put Michigan ahead. And Brett, one of the only statistical weaknesses of Ramil Robinson's game is his free throw shooting. 64%. A timeout will be used by Seton Hall. Seconds remaining in the NCAA's first championship overtime since 1963. Ramil Robinson, the point guard, and they're the parents who raised him in Cambridge, Massachusetts, with an opportunity to put Michigan ahead. It's a one and one. He'll shoot the front end right here and get a second free throw if successful. Defensive standout with a word of encouragement for his teammate. Now you see Steve Fisher wanting all his men off the lane. PJ, on the other hand, is going to want the ball up the half court and call a timeout. He only has three seconds, though, Billy. He might have done something in that timeout before so that they go with a long pass here. Let's see what happens on the free throw. Michigan leads it. Too far from that space needle here in Seattle. Michigan only three seconds away from claiming its first ever national championship and becoming the first team to win both the Rose Bowl and the NCAA in one year. Now after the timeout Fisher will deploy a taller man Mills against Ramos. He knows that P.J. Carlissimo cannot change. He's out of timeouts. 
So Fisher comes up with a big move after that timeout. They're going to have to get the ball over Mills, who will try to Harris, the big man on the throw in. Really like that strategy, Ben. Steve, Steve Fisher doing all the right things in this particular ball game. See, so Mills makes it tough to throw the line drive pass. Starts when touch. Long pass. Walker and Green battle. Walker fires up. It's over. Michigan has won a national championship. And for the third time in the last eight games, it has been decided by one point. The Wolverines win an NCAA title over Seton Hall, a tough opponent all the way.